Uh, I'm Kevin Williams. Uh, I'm the director of KWP Limited. Uh, I'm also the founding chair of the DNA Association. Humans can, if you will, step inside by using special goggles and a glove that enables the computer to sense human body movements and the human to see and manipulate artificial objects inside this virtually real world. I've worked in the uh, military simulation, commercial simulation and amusement sector for a long time. So we like to call this the fourth occasion or the fourth phase of uh, virtual reality. The 60s saw uh, Evans and Sutherland uh, with their developments uh, of their synthetic environments. We've seen in the 80s uh, VPL and NASA with their applications of virtual reality and of course virtuality uh, and the arcades uh, of the 90s. So with Palmer Lucky, I suppose 2011, we see as the fourth incarnation of virtual reality. But from our point of view, we're very interested in immersive entertainment. So not just head-mounted display virtual reality, but we're also interested in the simulation, the pod, the capsule experience as well. When the user looks up or down or right or left, the image shifts to appear in those locations. We have a number of agencies in the military training sector that use virtual reality headsets uh, to teach uh, shooting, to teach uh, operational awareness, as well as simulation for tanks and aircraft. Um, the medical side, I was lucky enough when I worked in the virtual reality the first time around to be involved with projects that utilize the very crude virtual reality technology of the 90s uh, to help with spatial awareness and people who suffered from agoraphobia. And uh, I think we will see a lot more of that. Uh, I've already heard of a number of projects of people successfully using the Rift, the development kit, to help with uh, certain illnesses and maladies uh, that are normally cured by mental health care. If the Oculus Rift could break that boundary, it's an interesting question. It, you know, it's a technology that has got a lot of popularity and a lot of people will be buying the consumer machine when it is released. Uh, how the consumer electronics industry embraces this technology towards its future is going to be interesting. I am biased. Uh, I am in the outer home entertainment sector. We would like to see this technology utilized to its fullness in our sector. Uh, and then the home sector grows off of the back of that, as we've seen with the computers. Uh, the first of the Polygon games was started in the amusement sector and then finally migrated into the consumer sector. That said, uh, we, we've seen very big success through projects like Disney Quest, where virtual reality has been placed in the theme park environment and been very profitable. So hopefully there's a middle ground for both of these. Uh, to quantify it, the arcades are dead, long live the amusement industry. The industry is still very profitable, as we've seen by uh, the profit figures from Namco, Sega and Konami. They still make a very large revenue out of uh, their amusement business. The only difference is that we don't go to an arcade now. We usually go to a family entertainment centre or a cinema or a bowling alley. And while we're there, we come across amusement product, video amusement product. Uh, there are a lot of people talking about three ways in which virtual reality could revive the application of the amusement application. One of those is like land centre, PC land centres of the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, where rather than going into a place and playing Doom with uh, connected PCs, you'd go into a facility and use your latest head-mounted display with a fast PC. Other people are talking about uh, VRcades, where you put on a head mount and it's wireless and you move around in a synthetic environment. And finally, there are people talking about attractions or specialist arcade machines that would be utilizing head-mounted display type technology. I think we'll see all three. Uh, I hope it's a cost-effective and profitable means. And now that people are looking for what we like to call an unachievable at home experience, then uh, immersive entertainment should be uh, a means to offer that. I think Oculus has got the lead. Uh, on head-mounted displays, though we are seeing other companies developing virtual viewing technology. Sony's going to be interesting, there's a, a vast number of Kickstarters uh, that are out there at the moment. We have to f understand one most important thing, that this is a peripheral. And if it's a successful peripheral, there will be many copiers.